I've featured plenty of vintage calculators on the channel, both electronic and mechanical. Most, even if not shown in the video, have needed to be repaired in some way or another. Sometimes the machine will remain as work in progress for months or even years. Anyway, today I'm going to show you a couple that are hopefully just work in progress, but as I'll explain in a bit, they might actually end up as complete failures. We'll start off with what has to be the most phenomenal calculator I've ever used, a 1979 HP 97 with its brilliant RPN, or reverse Polish notation, method of working. I'd done my homework on these machines and I knew that the general recommendation is to never use the calculator just on the power supply or charger. You should always have a battery in place. So, job number one was to dismantle the battery case and replace the four sub-C NICAD cells. All pretty straightforward stuff. After that I plugged the battery in and tentatively turned the calculator on. It worked. Blooming fantastic. I was very excited and spent some time playing with it and getting used to the somewhat unfamiliar RPN system. The printer, however, didn't work. The rubber feed wheels had gone hard and wouldn't feed the thermal printer paper. That was a slightly more involved task, but within an hour or so the printer was also up and running. Great stuff. But the HP 97 only has volatile memory. When you turn it off, your program or stored data is lost. The solution is little magnetic cards that pass through this slot on the front and out of the back of the machine. I didn't have any of those, so I went to fairly great expense to get some. When they arrived, not unsurprisingly, the rubber drive tyre on the card reader had decomposed, so the next task was to strip the card reader down and replace the drive tyre. I didn't video any of the repairs on this machine because I wanted to concentrate on what I was doing, but I did take a shot of the dismantled card reader, showing the tape head, the decomposed drive tyre and the gear on the axle. Once the card reader was back together I tried it out, and it wouldn't read or write data. Trudging through the service manual, there are a lot of procedures to get the card transport speed just right. Most of these involved a product called Magnacy that allows you to view the magnetic data recorded onto a card. I didn't have any Magnacy, and have no idea if it's even still available. So I just had to do a bit of guesswork to adjust the diameter and pressure of the new drive tyre until finally it worked. Yet again pretty excited, I entered some programs, saved them to magnetic card and successfully reloaded them into the calculator. All was great for about half an hour, until I looked down and saw the display was showing a minus sign and all zeros. Being used to modern technology, I just thought I'd turn it off and back on again and everything would be fine. But sadly it wasn't, and you'll have no idea just how gutted I was at that moment. Anyway, more trawling through the service manual gives a load of tests to perform with an oscilloscope, all of which came out okay. Voltages were correct, and all the waveforms were as they should be. The manual goes on to say, if all the waveforms are correct, replace one at a time ROM0, ROM1 and ROM3, until the calculator works again. And that's where I'm up to at the moment. The chips for this machine appear to be made of pure unobtainium, and finding a suitably priced donor machine seems unlikely. I've replaced a couple of tantalum capacitors that were way off their specified value, and a couple more that were a little bit off, but that's made no difference. I'll still keep checking just in case I can find something other than a blown chip that's causing the problem, but all my senses say it's a failed chip, probably one of the ROMs. Which are these chips here? And now on to the next failure, a uh, sorry, work in progress machine. A 1990 Soviet-made Electronica MC1103. Like the HP, this calculator also uses RPN, but this machine also has some really wacky extra features. On the rear are three sockets, allowing the calculator to be connected to other equipment. The calculator can measure voltages between minus 9.99 and plus 9.99 volts. It can also be used to control external devices, or be attached to an external printer. Or at least I think that's what it says in the manual. 
The MC1103 has two displays, one fairly standard 12-digit VFD and another one on the right, a rather strange VFD with seven illuminated blobs. I don't entirely know what this one is for, I'm pretty sure it's something to do with the analog to digital converter, but there are a few issues reading the manual, which is all in Russian. Obviously I can use Google Translate on my phone, but it's slow going, and when it comes to the circuit diagrams, they're handwritten, so Google Translate doesn't work very well, and they're kind of alien looking compared to what I'm used to. Turning the machine on just makes one or two of the blobs on the right hand display glow, and nothing else. As far as I can tell, there should also be a zero on the main display. The keyboard does nothing, with the exception of the start key, which makes the blobs go out. There is a switch on the rear marked blocker, which disables the entire keyboard apart from the start key, to stop you inadvertently entering data when taking readings from external devices. But the calculator behaves in the same way, no matter what position the blocker switch is in. Looking at the start key on the circuit diagram, it's independent of the rest of the keyboard and appears to deal with the analog to digital side of things. I want to get an isolation transformer before I go probing around in the machine with the oscilloscope, but we did do a little testing using a battery operated scope. All the sync signals are present, and the multiplexing of the grids on the VFD are active, but there's no signals going to the individual segments. The heater filaments can be seen glowing when the lights are off, so they're getting power as they should be. On the inside it's an alien looking world with these strange chips with their double spaced legs. Then there are others with open holes in the chip body like this. The soldering was shocking, and there were stray blobs everywhere, this being by far the biggest. But none of them appeared to be causing a short circuit anywhere. There's a second board beneath the main one, and both boards plug into multi-way sockets, which is nice. The lower board has more of the chips with the holes through them. I think this one is largely for the analog to digital converter. There's still plenty more investigation to do on this unit, and I'm still hoping to get it running. But as with the HP, if it's a blown chip, it's going to be pretty difficult to get a replacement. This machine was sold as new in box, but not as working, and I do wonder if someone got hold of a stock of unused factory rejects or something like that, but it's definitely worth persevering with it for a while. Even the power transformer is a thing of beauty, with outputs at plus 15 volts, plus 5 volts, minus 15 volts, minus 27 volts, and 5 volts AC. I know this has been a slightly unusual video, but I figured these machines are interesting enough even if they're not working. I will hopefully make some progress and bring you some updates in the future, but don't go holding your breath. Anyway, that's it for this video. If you've enjoyed watching, please like the video and maybe even subscribe to the channel, not forgetting to click on the bell icon so you get notifications when future videos are released. That's it for now, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future video.